Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for December 28th, 2022. Well, we're quickly winding down this year with a choppy, choppy market and low volume. Not that that's unexpected. We spent all day yesterday um, kind of dancing around um, trying to push the Dow up while the rest of the markets went lower, um, trying to inspire something and, and ended up with a whole lot of nothing. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can get some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, first off, one of the things I want to point out is volume has been very, very weak. Even um, last uh, Friday had a way better volume than we had yesterday. And I had mentioned the travel problems and issues out there and the fact that there's probably a lot of traders that are just gonna be taking this entire week off. So one of the things you wanna be really, really careful of, when, when the market's like this, you can work really, really hard. You can spend an awful lot of time flipping through charts, working really, really hard, trying to put money at risk when it might not be a real good idea to be putting money at risk because with this kind of light volume, we have some kind of overnight news and whether you're bullish or bearish in your, in your trades, we could get a full overnight reversal and a big potential move um, as a result. So you want to be really, really careful not to over trade in a boring market. Um, it may be a good time to just go take care of those honeydew lists or do just about anything else than um, rushing to put money at risk when most of the most of the market is pretty soft and light. Well, let's take a look at the Dow. First off, if we take a look in here, um, as I continue to mention, the Dow continues to hold above this downtrend, continues to be the most bullish of the indexes, and just so happens to be the smallest of the indexes, where it seems like the institutions are really working hard to manipulate this index, giving everyone the impression that we're extremely bullish and that everything is good to go. But unfortunately, I don't see that as the case. Now, when we look at the Dow here, we have uh, pushed back up here off of our main moving averages. And you can see we're pushing right back into some price resistance in the chart. The question is, will we have enough energy to push on through? And if we do, if those bulls find inspiration to push on through this level up here, and there may be reason for that. So for one of the things that we see an awful lot at end of quarter, end of year, is what we call window dressing. And that's where um, institutions, they have all the 401k money and things like that that come in, and they need to put it to work. So oftentimes you'll see um, a surge of buying. Now, one of the things you can also see is a lot of volatility around at the end of the year where big institutions and uh, big investors are shifting their trade ideas um, heading into the new year. There's also the tax selling that goes on, things like that that you want to be paying attention to. So when we look at this, um, and we um, see some bullishness in here. Well, I would say the next place we could go if the bullish bulls can push us up is maybe right up into this level. You can see we've got a little bit of area right through here where we could be holding. We held onto these support levels. This area became resistance. We had a little bit of resistance right in there, held on right in there uh, as resistance. So maybe up into there, which would be a huge move in the market. If we can um, get those bulls inspired, however, for some reason, if they were to push back, well, I think we've got some pretty good levels in here as well. Pushing back into here, you can see we've got these hold places here in the chart. 
that we could pull back into. Now that would be a hold. If you take a look right here, that would be a hold uh, above the 200 day moving average. And what we've got going on here is we've got a bit of a moving average squeeze setting itself up here. We've got our 20 uh, simple moving average, a 500 day, an eight exponential, a, th um, a 34 EMA, your 50 and your 200 day all right in this area. And on the Dow side, those that squeeze may have the opportunity to squeeze us to the upside. We'll have to wait and see if we can find enough bullish energy in here. But you could also see if we had some kind of a failure in this chart and we pushed back, then all of a sudden that squeeze could certainly set up to the downside here in um, in that diamonds chart. So keep a close eye on that. Now, if we look at the rest of the indexes, unfortunately, they are not um, nearly as bullish. If you can see here in the SPY, SPY, we've got a substantial resistance above here in the chart. And so far, we haven't been able to break even this last high. Um, yesterday was a, a rather rough day with the QQQ selling off, um, but maybe we get a little bit of life in the QQQ today because Hong Kong's tech sector had a little bit of a rally last night. As a matter of fact, that was the only only sector that rallied um, last night uh, in Asian markets. So keep an eye on that. But if those bulls can be inspired, I would look for a resistance level to come in right about here push up into that area see if we can push on through and if they can if the bulls can push through that then we're going to go going to start looking up into these areas like right in here and perhaps even just a little bit higher which would be a huge upside move you'll want to keep in mind that overall we are still in a bear downtrend here on the um, SPY. So if those bears were to be inspired, you can see it really wouldn't be too big of a leap um, to say, hey, a retest down in here could easily be possible and try and grab onto some of that support again in the chart. And of course, if that doesn't hold, maybe a retest of that um, big tail that we had here the other day. So um, watch that close. We're certainly not bullish here on the SPY. If we look at our technicals in the chart, that moving average squeeze is actually working against us here. As you can see, we've got all of our major moving averages above price here. And if we find that bearish uh, push here, then it really wouldn't be that hard of a um, uh, a visualization to see us breaking to the downside if that were to occur. I think it's a whole lot more difficult for the market to show a lot of bullishness here um, versus the bearishness. Let's uh, take a look at our QQQ and unfortunately our QQQ remains the weakest of the indexes. You can see yesterday, pretty hard selling. We're trying to get a little bit of a pop here this morning. Um, if you look across this chart, well, doggone it. You know, we look right in here and maybe if we can get those bulls inspired, we can push up here and test some of these levels right up in here um, in that uh, QQQ chart. If they're able to push on through that, well, maybe as high as here that we can push up. And that would be a huge, huge move um, in the NASDAQ. Is it possible? Certainly, if with enough window dressing and maybe a short squeeze being triggered in other places, we might get that going. We could also easily envision, however, if those bears were to continue to be inspired, then a retest down in here of the lows of the year, certainly possible. So we'd look for maybe a price level right in here and then a price level down into that level. So QQQ technically in that chart is very, very weak. And if we look at our technicals here, um, we've got our 34 and 20 uh, simple moving average uh, moving down below the 50. Um, our 50 day moving average is starting to flatten and turn just a little bit. So certainly the weakest of the indexes here. Um, it, but 
if you're bullish, it may be the most oversold and um, that opportunity for a little bit of a bounce, but I wouldn't hold my breath to suggest that this is just gonna take off to the upside. If we uh, take a look at our Russell IWM, IWM also tried in here yesterday, kind of like the Dow to get something going. Ultimately, just kind of spun out and um, ended up doing nothing. So yesterday we had the Dow that ended up closing up, closing up bullish and all three of the other indexes closing in the red. And if you look right in here, we have a fairly significant resistance level right across this area that we'll have to deal with if those bulls are going to be inspired. If they, if they really get um, um, engaged in going here to the upside, well, maybe we could push up into that level here of the chart pushing back up through that high and catching some of these high points right in here and here. Maybe we can get that done. We'll wanna watch for that. Uh, pushing through beyond that, um, we might see a resistance level right in here and it's pretty substantial resistance uh, level. You will wanna keep in mind that with the IWM, we are already in that bearish pattern where we made the lower high followed by the lower low and that establishes a potential downtrend here in the chart so we'll want to watch that carefully overall remember our bear trend is still in play and if we take a look at our moving averages here well we have that big moving average squeeze that could set up up here uh, if we get bullish, we're going to have to attack all of these averages up here and push on through. If um, those bears continue to um, uh, show their teeth and, and maybe attack, you can see how that moving average squeeze could put us into a little bit of a, uh, a hurt locker here um, with some more push to the downside. And if that were the case, then we're probably going to be looking at a retest of lows in here first. And if that breaks, then we start moving down uh, to these price levels here in the chart. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our VIX. VIX was a little bit um, back and forth yesterday. We um, started to put some fear in the market early in the day, and then they really started to pump pretty hard in the Dow. Um, um, trying to inspire some buying or halt any kind of selling that was going on and you could see that um, then that fear started to drop back. So what we've got going on here in the VIX is really kind of interesting with all of the issues that we have out there and we continue to see very very bearish um, economic numbers coming out and we're just literally ignoring them. We're not caring at all um, um, on those numbers, at least at the moment. Um, so, uh, you know, there's no fear here looking at this chart, which um, seems odd to me considering the data that we've seen out there. But watch that close. If we were to break this resistance level here in the chart, that's where we might see those bears really engage. Um, if we continue to push down, if those bulls continue to um, um, you know, lift us to the upside on this low volume. Well, maybe we can come all the way down into here on that VIX and, and retest some of these support levels in the chart. Um, I do think that levels down in here are really indicating some complacency, however, um, based on what we know about um, our economic data and the issues that we face going into next year. But um, that doesn't mean it has to make sense. Um, the market does not have to make sense. Just follow that price action and be really, really careful. But watch this closely because we could get that immediate fast reversal as a result of some of those data points. Now, if we take a look at our T2122, our T2122, um, well, just bounced around yesterday. Nothing much happened here on, on the day. What it's telling us here at this point, that is if those uh, bulls find inspiration, we certainly have 
upside potential here in the chart and we also know that we've rallied just enough we have a pretty good downside potential as well if those bears were to find inspiration so keep a close eye on it just kind of expect about anything in this low volume environment our t2108 well our t2108 pretty much just a punt yesterday nothing happened a um, lot of spinning top dojis out there in the market a lot of just chop and going nowhere on low volume so you can see pretty much stayed about the same place 37 38 percent of stocks holding above their 40-day moving average um, nothing particularly bad in here nothing particularly good if you look right in here we've got a little bit of price support down in this area that could hold us if they can push this up we've got price resistance above in the chart to be paying attention to if we take a look at our T2107, well, T2107 had a little bit better action, um, particularly right at the close, um, picked up just a little bit, but you can see not all that impressive. 40% of the stocks holding above their 200 day, but I got to give this up to the bulls a little bit more, noticing that they're holding on to this price support level here in the chart. So if they can continue to remain inspired, I would say um, upside opportunity up into here um, of course if those bears were to push on back we'd look for that support to try and hold if that doesn't then we start moving on down into these levels let's take a look um, t2101 I'm gonna skip that because the volume is so low it's not going to be giving us a whole lot of momentum indication here in the market. So let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar, well, we've got a few things in here to, to pay attention to, but by and large, a very, very boring day. We've got uh, pending home sales. We know home numbers haven't been all that um, encouraging. Uh, for the market itself, but we have largely ignored them. So um, keep an eye on this number today. They are actually expecting a consensus is, ex is expecting an improvement on that number. So watch that close. That could inspire a little bullish action here in the market. Now, if you paid attention yesterday, I know these aren't major market moving numbers, but yesterday, um, we had kind of a, a mix of data with our retail inventories missing, um, showing um, increases while our wholesale inventories declined. That was interesting on the day. And then we just had a horrible, horrible Dallas Fed manufacturing number that we pretty much ignored. So today, now we have a Richmond Fed manufacturing number. I kind of expect the way the market's been acting, no matter what it is, we're not going to pay much attention to it. So uh, keep that in mind. Later on today, we've got the you know State Street investor confidence. I doubt we get any reaction to that. Survey of business uncertainty. Probably not going to get any action out of that. Then we've got some bond auctions to pay attention to in the afternoon. As we look forward into Thursday, uh, jobless claims, natural gas, petroleum status, Fed balance sheet, and some more bond auctions uh, going off, but relatively light um, um, on the day. Friday, we've got that Chicago PMI to be paying attention to. So let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Earnings, well, here again, not a whole lot going on to provide us inspiration. Um, after the bell today, we have just one uh, confirmed report for today, CALM, some marine food out there. This has certainly been in a very, very bullish upside run. Watch that carefully. We've got support in here. This could be a very important report for uh, Calm. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thanks to everyone who does take the time Time to do that I do truly appreciate it let's take a look at a few of these stocks and see if we can 
uh, that may be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you need to be doing your own due diligence, be working um, pretty or watching pretty carefully, uh, thinking carefully about the risk you may be taking in this low volume environment before making a decision on a trade. So don't blindly follow anybody else's trade ideas. Make sure the setup makes sense to you and that you have um, a a good edge in the trade. First off, let's take a look. We've got um, some some defensive sector type stocks. Um, take a look at Campbell Soup, CPB. Um, defensive sector holding up here in a few places, some places not so much, but Campbell's looking good here on the day. Um, Kimberly Clark holding in here pretty nice, showing some uh, potential upside. We've got Coke holding in here, looking pretty good, trying to make a move to the upside. If you look out there in the casino sector, I don't know exactly what is inspiring casinos to move up when the consumer is so weak, but casinos um, had a nice little bounce here yesterday and win casinos. Um, we saw a movement in the Las Vegas Sands and they're gapping this morning trying to get something going here on LVS. So keep an eye on that. What was interesting is we also had bearishness um, in that sector with Penn National moving lower. So kind of an interesting mix of things going on here. You could take a look at some of those rubber shoes out there. Um, Crocs, Crocs looking very, very bullish to the upside, showing lots of inspiration and wanting to move on higher. Yet at the same time, we have stocks like, well, Visa that really could be setting up short. You can see we broke support in here, rallying back to a resistance. I would kind of keep a close eye on that. So we've got Visa and maybe MasterCard um, in those same kind of setups here um, in the chart, PayPal. Um, not exactly inspiring and, and maybe looking for more downside here. You can see setting on the floor um, here on uh, the year lows. So we've got some mix in some of those pay systems out there uh, going on. We certainly had gold doing a good job yesterday. And so gold looking good in anything along that sector. If you take a look at um, like Berry Gold, that's a bullish chart. Um, Royal Gold looking good. You could look at um, some of the mining ETFs like GDX or GDXJ, both looking pretty darn bullish out there. Of course, Silver was still looking good yesterday. Um, we'll want to keep an eye on those. They've been talking about those quite a lot, um, showing a lot of strength in those sectors. Um, we saw copper also responding and holding in there pretty well. Um, there was some movement, whoops, uh, there was some movement in steel yesterday. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs breaking through some resistance here, holding and continuing to show bullishness uh, to the upside. So I think that's worth taking a look at. Um, we also had, you know, things not looking so good. Um, we had Walmart um, kind of just kind of drifting around here. But one of the things you want to notice here, breaking below its 50, we're going to gap down and big pop here this morning. I don't know what's going on there, but I would watch that 50 day moving average here. Watch for that potential failure pattern uh, to set up and occur here. Other retailers out there, uh, Target had a nice little bounce back up um, but boy we've got a, a lot of resistance above here in that chart so watch that closely as well um, we continue to see um, um, oil um, fluctuating pretty substantially we've been up here recently this morning we're down in that oil sector but when we take a look at stocks like Halliburton that refining sector uh, refining stocks, those are still holding up pretty well. Uh, Schlumberger holding up pretty nicely. So keep an eye on some of those. They're kind of hanging in and looking good. Um, we've got stocks like Boeing continue to hold in here, breaking those downtrends, holding up. Caterpillar holding up in here, testing all time highs here in Caterpillar and just kind of slow grinding um, to the upside here. Um, so 
th these are the, I would say, Boeing and, and Caterpillar were the main sources for the, the Dow rallying yesterday. So keep a close eye on these. And then um, as we look even further, if we look into some of big tech, well, my goodness, um, Tesla. Tesla, uh, I think they... I think they need to recharge that battery just a little bit. Not looking so good here. We got a little bounce maybe coming in here today. Watch that carefully. But Tesla trying to, um, well, trying to look <laughs> like a watershed is happening here um, in that chart. If we take a look at Amazon, Amazon um, down here uh, making new lows on the year. Definitely not showing a lot of bullishness there. Um, we saw Apple uh, pushing down yesterday, but finally caught a little bit of a, a bounce after we tested and broke through the, the lows of the year here on Apple. So big tech struggling. NVIDIA um, had a really rough day yesterday, breaking down uh, pushing on lower here in the chart. So a lot of that tech is struggling hard. So with that, guys, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. And, and I want to wish you uh, great trading if you choose to do that. I would want to remind just once again that this can be a very dangerous market to be trading in in such low volume. We could get these overnight reversals that could just you know, tear your face off. And, and it really doesn't matter if you're long or short. Um, they could really tear your face off um, here in the market um, if you're over trading. So be kind of careful. Remember, if you're working really, really hard um, in a market, uh, trying to find some place to risk your money, then um, it may be um, a good idea to just protect that capital, stand aside, and wait until we have a little bit better action here in the market. Remember, the market's going to be open next year, and the volume will be back, and there's going to be plenty of opportunity to make money, so don't don't work so hard to uh, to fight the market here when volume is so low and the market being so insipid. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all the very, very best. Have an awesome day. Um, right Way Options, folks, it's going to be another one of those hit and miss days. Um, I'm just not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the market, kind of just circling around. Um, um, so kind of expect a quiet day in the trading room. With that, everyone, I want to wish you all the best. We'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Have a great day.